you know, and um, it was last year about this time that I put into a, an Excel file that we were going to be talking about do not worry today. And you think about that and read all you can on the subject. And, um, and then you wake up Saturday and someone you dearly love and respect and who is com incredibly valuable to members of this congregation is just gone. And it's, it's hard sometimes to hear the words of Jesus saying, do not worry. And to take him seriously. I imagine that a lot of what we've talked about on the sermon, with the Sermon on the Mount is hard to take seriously. Turning the other cheek and those who are poor in spirit will be uplifted. It just doesn't seem like right now, that's playing out all the time. To hear Jesus say, look at the birds of the field. Aren't they so well taken care of? And at times to be jealous of the birds of the field. Those plants that are so well adorned, when do they have to grieve? And so we're going to look at this passage, but I, I want you to know that like at the heart of it, we're just struggling to find a grip sometimes. Do not worry. I don't know about you, but sometimes that feels like all I've got is just a dread of the future. When I'm at my, uh, when I'm at my unhealthiest, I'm just dwelling in my mistakes of my past and the dread of the future. And maybe that's the message Jesus is sending us here. So you can just turn that projector off. Well, there we go. It heard my threat. No, it didn't. That's well, fine. But let's read it. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about what, about your life, about what you will eat, what you will drink, about your body, about what you where is not life more than food? Is not life more than the body more than clothing? Pay attention to the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap, but gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they are? And why do you worry about clothing? Jesus said. Why do you worry about clothing? Consider the, the lilies of the field, how they grow. Doesn't God take care of them? I tell you, Solomon isn't, in all of his glory, he doesn't even compare to the flowers. But if God is so clothed by the has so clothed the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? Therefore... Do not worry saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it's the Gentiles, the nations that struggle with these sorts of things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need all of these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things will be given to you. So do not worry about tomorrow. 
for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. Turns out, as always, Jesus has something to say to us. That while he's talking about birds and fields and lilies and seed, I can feel like it's trivial in the muck in which I stand. In the division and the, and the, the death and the poverty and the brokenness in this world. None God is rooting for. None of this death God is rooting for. None of this hurt God is celebrating as part of some divine plan where a sophomore and a senior and a husband lose their love. That is not God's plan. That's not where God is leading us. Like there's some divine story in which God has written out the steps of our life and we take these steps and we do the things that God tells us to do. And you lose a father, you lose a mother, you lose a wife. And you say, oh, well, you know, I don't know what God's doing here, but God's doing something. The God we follow is the one who created us to be in relationship with him. And when we abandon that, our God brought, came to us to heal that relationship, died for us. To experience that with us. Rose for us and with us to conquer not his plan, but the problem. We don't worry. It's not, it's not like we don't worry because God has promised us that he, all, everything will be fine. Because I've seen over and again, everything is not fine. God has not promised us. We don't, we don't say, oh, look at the birds and look at the, at the plants. Because everything will be okay. Oh, and man, we want it to be okay. We pretend. The amount of times Christians have gussied up grief. So that we can just at least somehow say, oh, well, there's some bigger plan and she's in a better place and, and, and uh, he, he, he lived a good life. We've gussied up grief and feigned happiness because we've been told that's what Christians are supposed to be. But Jesus does not say there's no trouble. Actually, his argument is, this, is the opposite. He's saying there's so much trouble today that it doesn't make sense to go on to tomorrow. If while dealing with today's troubles, you're worried about tomorrow's troubles, you won't have the strength for today's troubles. Jesus is acknowledging there is trouble. There is brokenness. There's heartbrokenness. We are not as Christians called to just, uh, you know, feel better. Have funerals where we get together and we're supposed to grieve. And we're declaring, no, no one be sad. This is a celebration of life. Well, if you don't mind, pastor, I'm going to grieve death for a second. I'm going to be sad that life stops for a minute. And that people miss the, their loved ones for a minute. Don't tell me not to feel anxiety. Sometimes we use this passage to ask people to just, you know, could you fake it, please? For a time. You know, the Bible says, don't worry. God will take care of it. God will take care of you. Well, I'm still devastated. How about that? God tells us, Jesus tells us not to worry, not because 
He thinks everything's fine. He's not promising us everything's going to be fine. And you know what? Thank God he's not. Because if that were his promise, he's missed so far. His promise is not that your life's going to be fine. His promise is that your God is going to be faithful. That when God says, I will raise the dead, death will not have the final say. When God says, your sins, your brokenness, the brokenness of this whole humanity. Like we consistently make the wrong decisions, say the wrong things, have the wrong opinions and have the wrong uh, motives. Like we're, we're not batting a thousand here as humanity. But when he says your sins are forgiven, our sins are forgiven. When he says I am on the throne and all who wish to come to me shall gather. And that there will be a multitude upon multitudes of every nation, every tribe, every language worshiping God together. I know that is so. I don't think everything's going to be fine right now. I do think our God will be faithful for all time. And so when he says, look at the birds. He's not saying, look how healthy they are. He's saying, look how faithful God is. When he says, look at the plants, he's not saying, look how be beautiful they are. Why are they beautiful? Because God is with them. I think the best thing we can do as followers of Jesus in difficult times is to feel whatever we're feeling without asking scripture if it's okay. Without someone trying to tell you, you know, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Without someone trying to tell you, well, I know, how, I know the plans God has for you. Plans to prosper. Plan. I got plans. The only plan I'm certain of, because I have ridden down some bumpy slopes. The only plan I'm certain of is the one that ends with an empty tomb and an occupied throne. That's the only one I've got. And so Jesus is asking me to be present in this moment. Not go to tomorrow and worry about what's going to happen there. Jesus is asking me to be present right here in this moment. And if this moment is sad, I'm sad. If this mo moment is worrisome, then I'm going to worry. My heart's going to go out to people who are hurting. And so we are called as fo the followers of Jesus, the, the ones who have been impacted by the faithfulness of God. And even when this country of death knocks at our door, we have to fall back on this, this colony of heaven we have in this place around this table, followers of Jesus leaning on the fact that even though it feels like we're drowning sometimes, God is faithful to what God says he will do. You know, when... I, I was, I was so blessed uh, growing up. I, um, I had um, my dad's parents, um, Mimi and Papaw. I had Momo and Papaw on my mom's side. We just, in Arkansas, we just say syllables. <laughs> just pick a syllable and double it up. Um, we had Granny B, who was my great-grandmother. Paul Page, who was um, our, my great-grandfather, and Granny Helwyn, who was my great-grandmother. Um, I grew up fully immersed with seven grandparents. 
in my hometown. Um, the first one to die was when I was um, 24, 25, Papa. Um, he, uh, and it was, it was the first day I started preaching. At, um, well, it was when we moved in officially down in Teague. Moved in, preached that Sunday, got it word the next, and then my, my mom and dad were down with us, and dad drove up. It's so crazy when something awful like that happens, and you're just walking around the world, and none of these people know. Yesterday, we went to... Um, Nolan's flag football game and I, I took him took him to get his pictures taken and then we were it was picture day and then we went down and um, played the game and I was walking out to the field and I was walk, as I was walking out to the field I heard someone say um, mommy and daddy's good friend died last night and I felt I didn't I didn't want to be that guy um, they didn't know me. They don't, they don't know my heart. But I felt this overwhelming urge to go meet them. Because in this field of people who are just having a normal day, me and this woman weren't. And a community... Not just people, not just individual people who know that God is faithful and God pro promises certain things and that death is not, not the end and that sin does not have the final word and the throne reigns supreme over all division and brokenness in this world. Not just people, but communities that exist in that realm. That's what we talk about at the table. I wanted to go have communion with that woman because we're hurting together. And so do not worry is not a face. It's not a, a perception. It's not, you know, the, a projection of self. Do not worry is not I'm fine. Where we declare, we've got this all together, we're holding it together, and if I don't hold it together, no one will. Do not worry. Is Jesus walking through the way we should be? And the way we should be, the way we should live, is, it has more to do with trusting that this God who says he is faithful, it will be faithful. It has less to do with getting my way. Having power and having authority and getting my way. I'm actually going to have to turn the other cheek. I'm going to have to lose a little. I'm going to have to not, not win. I'm going to have to give in. Sometimes. And when I do that, i got to trust God. That that loss is not the final word. That hurt is not all I will ever feel. But then when it comes down to it, the trouble of today, there's a lot of it. But God can handle it. There's a lot of trouble today. And as I look here and see how much the waves crash, I can look to God and just see the promise just holds. The promise holds true. So as we wade together through trouble, and whether, whether you knew the Crawfords or not, you know what it's like to 
be faced with this sort of pain and this sort of loss. You've been there. That's why we gather together, walk through life together. And I have, I have not been through anything that a loving church can't help with. That a forgiving savior, that a resurrected king, not solve, not make better, but no matter what brokenness comes our way, no matter what chaos comes our way, the promise of God is firm. And we stand. Sometimes all we've got to stand on is Christ. And it feels like a balancing act at, some, at times, but the more you get to know Christ, the solid more solid and firm that foundation is. So sometimes I can't, I can't bank on the certainty of tomorrow. But today I can stand on Christ alone. Let's pray together. Father, may your spirit overwhelm us. May those who are hurting deeply today not feel any, um, any amount of should have, like they should do this or should do that. May they stand on you. May we stand on your promise. And if all we've got today is, is Jesus, if all we've got today is Christ, then we stand firm. May those who are feeling like they need to crumble to the floor, may you crumble with them and comfort them. For you are the God who lies down with us and gets up with us. You are the God who grieves with us and rejoices with us. But you are never afraid with us. For you know what you mean when you promise something. And that death is defeated. The troubles of today cannot overcome your promise and that you provide. Father, fill us with your spirit. It's in your son's holy name we pray. Amen.